A.J. Brown to the house. Brian Tannehill taking him to school. Hope everyone is having a great Labor Day weekend. Welcome to Titans All Access with Amy Wells. I'm Mike Keith. So glad to have you for what figures to be an outstanding show. Our buddy Jim White from TennesseeTitans.com is on deck. He's going to talk about what the offense looked like in training camp. Well, Mike, you can't forget the Nissan Insider. He's kind of a big deal. It's Big Jeff. It's Big Jeff indeed. Jeffrey Simmons, our Nissan Insider. We'll have a preview of Titans third round pick running back Darrington Evans out of Appalachian State. And we're going to have the Stuff the Bus campaign. Kevin Byard got involved. It's really great to see. That and a whole lot more on this edition of the program. But we open with one of the biggest name media members in the country coming to preview the Titans. Peter King of NBC, who writes the Football Morning in America column, made this one of his very few stops on the overall tour that he took around the country this summer. And his article about the Titans actually came out this past Monday. Absolutely, it did. And we love to see the national media out here, especially when there's so few opportunities. So with few stops for Peter King because of COVID-19, why was Nashville one of the places that he wanted to see? The Titans intrigue him. Why did you decide to make the Tennessee Titans a stop on your shortened tour, well, your condensed tour. there's two reasons. The overriding reason is that at the end of last year, I remember seeing Mike Vrabel in the locker room in Kansas City. And Mike Vrabel was not crushed. He was not uh, despondent, nor was he, hey man, we had a great year. He was just like, all right, we're on to the next thing. And, you know, I just got this impression and I talked to Vrabel while I was here I got the impression, you know, that he really subscribes to the Parcells theory of you never start one year where you left off the previous year. And that's exactly the way he feels. But I think there's so many interesting things about this team. I mean, when any football fan thinks of the Tennessee Titans, they think of Derrick Henry having these monstrous games in the playoffs. Does any American football fan know that Ryan Tannehill had the highest quarterback rating in the last six years last year for this team right here? No, nobody, nobody even has a clue. But Arthur Smith, Vrabel, Tannehill, they, they all figured out a way to do some really interesting stuff on offense, to do some really varied stuff on offense. I just, I don't... I don't have a great feel for this division. Should Houston win it again? Is Indy ready to take the jump? Can these guys hold everybody off? It's a fascinating team, and it's a fascinating division. Does the league, does the national media know what to make of the 2020 Tennessee Titans? No. I, I don't think America really knows, to what knows what to make of this team because not necessarily the New England game because that, to me, was not a surprise at all. The Baltimore game was a surprise. And I think when you watch that game, you know, the one play that is front of mind about that play is, you know, the long Khalif Raymond play that nobody saw coming. Can he hold it? Yes! Touchdown, Titans! Khalif Raymond! I think that is one of the really, really interesting things about this team, and that is that you know, Arthur Smith, I was talking to John Robinson, just shooting the breeze a little bit with him. And, and he said, you know, he tries to zig while everybody else is zagging. And I think that's one of the great things about play callers in the NFL. It isn't necessarily if you have the best players. It is when you call plays, the fact that it's a lot better to call a play when the defense doesn't see it coming. And I think that's a lot of what this team is. So I think it's a, just a fascinating team. Mike Keith, I really like all of the curiosity about the Titans. It makes me excited to impress the world. And we're going to see what the Titans are able to do coming up next weekend. But coming up next segment, this lady, Amy Wells, is standing by with TennesseeTitans.com's Jim Wyatt to talk about the Titans offense. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Titans All Access. We are joined by the great Jim Wyatt. 
Jim, we're talking all things offense today, and so I have to start with the quarterback and the running back, the two most prominent guys on that side of the ball. In your analysis, what did you see out of Ryan Tannehill and Derrick Henry? Well, I think Ryan Tannehill has looked poised. He's looked, he's looked in command. You know, he, we all remember like this time last season, he was deferring to Marcus Mariota as the backup quarterback, just waiting his turn. He got an opportunity, and he hit the ground running. And I think having another year in the system with Arthur Smith, I think he's looked really good. He's been accurate in practices. I think Derrick Henry has always been on the go. I mean, I think running the football, he's been very effective. He came in camp in great shape. When there's a break in the action, he hits the sand pit, you know, hits the bike. He's always doing something. You can tell both those guys ready to start the season. Do you feel like A.J. Brown has picked up where he left off his rookie season in 2019? I do. I mean, I look at him and he, he just doesn't look like a guy who is going to the second season. He's got such a professional approach to him, just his work ethic the way he attacks the football in practices. I think one thing that's stood out to me is he just hasn't had an easy camp because I think the defensive backs have really risen to the occasion as far as being physical with him, getting up in his face, challenging him on a lot of plays in practices. He's won that battle some days, and some days those guys have knocked balls away, but I like that because I think that's something that's going to really prepare him for the season. Adam Humphreys is a guy who missed the last couple of months of 2019. He's back now in 2020. Do you feel like he's picking up kind of where he left off? Yeah, I mean, last season he, he limped to the finish, you know, uh, unfortunately because of the ankle injury that he suffered late in the season. I think he gutted it out to be able to play in the season finale. Talking to him this offseason, just having a year with Ryan Tannehill, kind of knowing what to expect, having a better field of offense. I have to say last year I noticed him in camp more than I have this season. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. I just think this team has so many more options on the offensive side of the ball that he doesn't necessarily have to be the focal point in a lot of practices. Jim White, you've been here for a while. Do you think that this could be one of the most effective Titans offenses in over a decade? Well, it's a tough act to follow. I think there's every reason to believe it can be, but I look at what it did last year. I mean, first in, in the league in red zone efficiency at 75.6, third in the league in rushing yards, 138.9 a game, fourth in yards per play, 6.2, tenth in points per game, averaging 25.1 a game. Tannehill was number one in pass rating. Derrick Henry leads the league in rushing. A.J. Brown, a 1,000-yard receiver. So you're picking up from, from that success. But the good news is these guys are back, and I think there's a comfort level there. These guys have played alongside one another. They've got the same offensive coordinator. So heading into the season, I think there's reason to be very optimistic about things moving forward. All right, so let's maybe not shoot for all of those number one <laughs> numbers, but let's shoot for top five. What are some of the keys for the Titans offense to be one of those top five offenses in the league? Well, I think red zone efficiency is always going to be, you know, at the top of that list or near the top because number one, obviously, is, is good health. I mean, you've got to keep Tannehill healthy. You've got to keep, you know, Derrick Henry healthy and have them play, you know, a 16-game season and then going into postseason. But you've got to be able to score when you get close to the end zone. That's what this team did so well last season. So you need to continue to do that, get your playmakers involved, spread the football around. You know, the only real question mark going to the season is, is just how things are going to shake out at right tackle. I think, I think we have a feeling that it's going to end up being Dennis Kelly's spot. So just that offensive line being able to, to be, you know, cohesive and operating, you know, without any hiccups is a key as well. Jim Wyatt, it's always good to have you here. Guys, check him out on TennesseeTitans.com. He writes something new every single day. Every single day. All right, we're going to head to break, and as we go there, we're going to give you a little scouting report on the Tennessee Titans rookie running back, Darrington Evans. He was very intelligent. You know, when we first saw his film, we knew he could run, so he was fast. But then I think just really his personality, he was kind of quiet, but yet when he did open up and talk, um, you could tell that he had a lot going on up inside his head. You know, when we first recruited him, we didn't know whether he was going to be a wide receiver or a running back. You know, we knew he was a great athlete. We knew we needed to get the ball in his hands. When we decided to switch into running back, and he, he just started getting tougher and tougher. Because the one thing about running back, obviously, you know, you're going to take a lot of big hits. And, you know, we just didn't know at the college level would he be able to do that. But the more and more he did it, wow. I mean, he really turned it on and uh, was started to break tackles. And, and so really probably that, that, that first 
full-time year, probably midway through that year is when he really, really came on strong with that and really hadn't looked back ever since. I think just his versatility, I mean, his ability to, to catch the football out of the backfield. Then also the fact that you know, when you're running the zone play, which I know you guys run that, and he is really, really patient. And then when it's time to hit the hole, he'll stick his foot in the ground. And he's going north and south, and he can take it the distance. I think he'll be able to, to protect in the backfield as well. He's not extremely big running back, but he's so smart. He understands protections, and so he'll know which guy he needs to go protect. I love players that I think that you can approach and be be able to pull for and root for. He's going to be that kind of player. And then I think just his electricity, he's going to be able to provide on the field. You know, putting those two things together, I think he's, that he's certainly going to be a fan favorite. He is a first-class human being, first and foremost, who happens to be able to, to run fast. And, and so, you know, to me, that's a great combination. I really believe that the Titans hit a home run with Darrington Evans, and I'm so excited for the fans there to be able to watch him. Glad to have you back with us as we get ready to talk about year two of Big Jeff. Jeffrey Simmons joining us on Titans All Access. Big man, how are you? I'm great. I'm feeling good. Body feeling good. You know, I'm just glad to be back with the team. You know, we've been working so hard the last couple of days. And, you know, of course, it's different for us. But at the same time, you know, we all have a job. And that job is, you know, adapt to the change and, you know, just keep working. How is Jeffrey Simmons different entering year number two than he was entering year number one outside of the obvious, which is the big bulky knee brace? Well, first of all, you know, it's a lot of new expectation, not just for me, but for this team. You know, if we pick it back off last year, you know, we we didn't get to exactly where we wanted to get at. And, um, you know, this year you right here, you know, we forgetting last year, you know, it's all about this year here, you know. Me personally, you know, I'm all, way, I'm all about, you know, what can I do for this team to help this team win? You know, just that mindset, okay, it's time to really just go take over. I'm always interested to ask this question of a guy entering year two. As you finished up that rookie year playing in the AFC Championship game, what did you know in January that you would not have had any way to know last August having finished a full season? I mean, it just, uh, I think, especially, you know, playing in this league, it's just so many expectations, you know, coming from, you know, not just the coaches, but your teammates, you know. Your teammates, they pushing on you to go make that play. They pushing on you to get in the quarterback phase. Just the, around you, it's just so much that you have to know, especially playing defensive line, you know. And, you know, me playing, especially being a rookie, you know, it just, you know, you don't pay attention to them things at first in the beginning of the season because you're like, okay, I'm, I might not be in this situation, especially me, because I wasn't playing. I was like, I, I might not be in this situation. But later in the season, when you actually, you know, you end up being that guy that they're depending on because of someone else might have went down, but now it's your chance to, you know, step in. So it's the same thing, like I said earlier, you have to always be alert because you never know when is your chance to step in. So. Let me follow that in a way because I think about the playoff game in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. Early in the game, you're putting the rush on Lamar Jackson. You get through, get your hands up, force him to throw over you. He makes a bad throw. Kevin Byard intercepts. That's the type of play you're talking about. Even though it's not a big stat Correct. for Jeffrey Simmons, you had a major impact on that play and thus on that game. Correct. I mean, like I said, that's, that's where, you know, this team focuses on, you know, how can I help this team win? Just by me, you know, getting in the pocket, you know, very, Coach Ray always talk about affecting the quarterback. That's a way to affect the quarterback, to get in the middle of the pocket, you know, especially to get my hands up so he could overthrow his guys. Our job is to help out the DBs. Our DBs' job is, you know, help out us. You know, if we get into the quarterback and he rushing his throws, you know, of course, I know we have a great secondary and they're going to intercept the ball. They're just like, if we got great coverage on the back end, we're going to get to the quarterback. So it just, everybody playing a part. And you, like I said, that game right there just shows that if we doing what we talked about during the week, completing our goal, and our goal was to affect the quarterback. And that's what we did. So, you know, um, it was a great intercession on the back end. So 
Because you were coming off a surgery, you had a chance to be at St. Thomas Sports Park during the off season, even during the pandemic situation, when this place was just vacant. What was that like? It was different, yeah, especially, you know, not being able to be around the guys, you know. You know, this game of football is all about relationships. You know, you have to have a relationship, not just with the players, but the coaches. And, you know, you really don't see nobody but the training staff or the weight room, lifting staff, you know, coach, frame them. So it just was so different for me because, like I said, I, just, I wanted to get my knee right, but at the same time, you know, where's the other teammates, you know, that I could get this bun with that, you know, like, like I said last year, you know, with the rookies coming in, you know, I, even though I was doing rehab, I, the player was still around. And I was able to get a relationship with some of the players and with most of the players. So it just, just off season, it was different. But like I said, it just, I was okay with it. You know, my thing was, you know, I'm coming here to get my knee better. I'm coming here to get better every day. So I was like my head down, just trying to work. All right, so let's end it with this. I'm standing here five months from now and I'm describing Jeffrey Simmons 2020 season. How do you hope I'm describing it? What do you hope I'm saying? First off, um, you know, just I helped my team win the Super Bowl. You know, um, secondly, you know, I just wanted everyone to see that the reason why I came to the Titans and the reason why I came here and I feel like John and them um, got me here, Covrave and them got me here is because they, they want me here to disrupt the line of scrimmage. And my goal is to do whatever I can to help this team win the Super Bowl, but same time, you know, for me personally, I want to show everybody in this league that I deserve and belong in this league by dominating every snap of the um, game. So, Be a disruptor. I will. Good stuff. Thanks That's for the it. time. Thank you. Tighten up. Second year, Jeffrey Simmons with us on the program. We're back with more of the show right after this. Every vote counts. I know a lot of times for me, I, I think my vote's not going to count. But if the person next to me says the same thing, the next person him says the same thing, all of a sudden nobody's voting. I didn't really feel the importance as a younger adult, but now I really see the importance, especially in this election, because every single vote counts. I mean, you never know if your vote could be the swing vote that can decide you know, who could be the president. It's your right as an American to, to make sure that your voice is heard and you have a say that one not only goes on the presidential elections, but you know everything between that and city council. Every vote counts. 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 Tighten up. The Titans have partnered with I Am A Voter to support the league's NFL Votes campaign. The goal of this partnership is to educate Titans players, staff, and fans about voting registration and activation. Titans fans are encouraged to text T-I-T-A-N-S, that spells Titans, to 26797 to find out their registration status and get more information about the upcoming election. Now here are some important dates. September 22nd is National Voter Registration Day. November 3rd, of course, is Election Day. Now, if you live in Tennessee, October 5th is voter registration deadlines for you guys, and October 14th through the 29th is early voting. In Kentucky, October 5th, again, is that voter registration deadline. October 13th through November 2nd, that's early voting for you guys in Kentucky. And in Alabama, October 19th is your voter registration deadline. There's more Titans All Access on the way. Coming up after this break, we are stuffing the bus and Kevin Byard makes a great donation. Stick around. The Tennessee Titans and Academy Sports and Outdoors partner to Stuff the Bus. Amy Wells, please explain what is Stuff the Bus. Well, you get stuff that you would put on a bus, like school supplies. Stuff you would put on a bus. Isn't I like what you nice? did there. Yes. Yeah, thank you. So Kevin Byard got involved in the Stuff the Bus campaign, donating backpacks for kids at Inglewood Elementary School. And it was pretty cool. They were able to drive through, pick up their backpacks, and see their teachers. Check it out. Hey, this is Kevin Byard, our pro safety for your Tennessee Titans. In honor of back to school, my foundation, the Byard Family Legacy Fund, and United Way of Greater Nashville has partnered with Academy Sports to provide much needed equipment, supplies, backpacks, and much more to thousands of children in need in the Greater Nashville area. The kids were very excited when I told them that they were getting backpacks from the Titans. That was like, yeah, that was extra, extra special for them. We've been working on Stuff the Bus for, I think, close to 15 years now, and uh, the Titans have always been the principal sponsor. The trying times that we are now, we're all being challenged in one way or the other, 
you know, different messages on schools, on sports. So being able to take advantage, maybe take a little bit of, you know, stress off a parent's shoulder, you can't beat it. We're gonna help close to 10,000 kids get the school supplies they need this year. And these are kids who don't always have what they need. The white drawstring backpack as asked for, with all your third grade stuff in there. So you can be really extra smart in my class and do your work right. It's typical need combined with the stress um, caused by COVID-19 and job loss and financial stress. Um, so being able to tell families over the summer, don't buy school supplies, like we've got you, um, was, was really, really incredible and they um, are so, so appreciative. This weekend, a holiday weekend with Labor Day. Next week, kickoff week for the National Football League. Woohoo! It's here. Lots of things going on with the Tennessee Titans during kickoff week. We will show you as many of those things as we possibly can on next week's edition of Titans All Access. We'll get you ready for the Monday Night Football opener in Denver. General Manager John Robinson is back with official word on the Tennessee Titans roster. And our Nissan Insider has to be the quarterback. Ryan Tannehill sits down with me to talk Titans. All that and more next week on Titans All Access. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Have a great Labor Day weekend, and thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.